Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know I've been away for a while. I haven't posted a video in probably, a, you know, what, three weeks or something. Uh, things have just been crazy. I haven't had the time. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, with work and everything else, it's just been tough. So we'll try and get back into some more um, uh, consistent posting. But uh, uh, I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you guys for all the support that you've shown me uh, in the time that I've had the channel. And uh, we're continuing to grow, and it's a really cool thing to watch. Um, so if you're watching now and you haven't subscribed yet, uh, if you do me a favor and just click the button for me, uh, it means a lot to me. It helps me get to that magic number of a thousand subscribers, uh, and I can get monetized and, uh, uh, that'll make some of these, uh, things a little bit easier for me to do, um, that aren't always easily affordable because it is an expensive thing to do, uh, when you're running a YouTube channel, trying to, to travel all over the place, different bodies of water. Um, it gets expensive quick. So any and all support, uh, I would appreciate it. But today we're going to talk about tackle organization. Uh, I had a buddy reach out and, and kind of, uh, wanted to know what I do from an organizational standpoint in the boat. So, uh, there's a couple of things I do. So from a box standpoint, um, most everything I have, not everything yet, but most everything I have is, is from lure lock. Um, that tack logic system at the bottom of a lure lock box is by far, uh, one of the coolest technologies in a tackle box. Uh, some people are like, oh, it's just hype. It's just this, it's just that. Uh, no, it really isn't. Um, you know, when you're bouncing around through the lakes, uh, it keeps all your stuff from banging against each other, holds it snug in there. Um, they don't get all beat up. Uh, they don't leave any gel or any sticky substance on the tackle. Uh, they're just plain good boxes. So, uh, I run two different sizes. I run the large and I run the medium. So the large ones are more for the box that I'm sitting on now. Uh, I can hold, uh, I don't know, 15 boxes in there. Uh, and then the mediums, which is this size, I use for my back, uh, my back hatches because they're just a little bit smaller and these bigger boxes just don't fit in it. So from a organizational standpoint, um, you know, it's all about efficiency, right? You want to be as efficient as you can on the water. You want to be able to know where things are and get to them quickly uh, when a different situation arises that you might need something. So the way I organize everything, first of all, is I put those little label maker tabs on there so I know exactly what's in the box. So this one's labeled smoothies, uh, three to five feet, and on the inside are just Lucky Strike, uh, Ricky Klon Lucky Strike smoothies. Um, and so everything in here is that uh, shallow diving, you know, the mid range diving, um, crankbait. Um, these are one of my favorites, especially for smallmouth. You got a nice, slim, long profile, uh, tight wobble. Uh, the smallmouth absolutely love them. Uh, and I have them in about every color under the sun. Uh, so box like that, got a box like this. This one is labeled RC twos, uh, the three to five feet. So that is full of just the little uh, Ricky Klun uh, two square bills. Uh, these things are fantastic in the fall when the fish are feeding on, you know, smaller bait fish. Um, but that's all it is, just full of those, uh, both rattling and silent. And again, just easy. Uh, the same thing's in there, so I don't have to guess what depth they're at. Uh, this next one, uh, this has got some Rapala stuff. So I've got some DTs. Um, I've got some scatters. Um, you know, some of the shallower diving DTs and then my booyahs are in here also. Next box, uh, these are the G5. So these are the uh, uh, Lucky Strike G5s. You know, kind of a wiggle wart esque uh, type of a uh, crankbait. Again, they dive five to eight feet. Um, they're all the same crankbait in there uh, and all different colors, right? So you got your uh, uh, craw patterns bluegill patterns i got a few odds and ends in there but mostly they're all g5s um your shad patterns whites uh stuff like that um again easy uh to know um because they're all the same thing uh and then in this other small box are all my jig heads so all my swim bait heads 
um, uh, tube heads, uh, wacky rig heads, um, all that kind of stuff all in there. Um, and again, it's all easily accessible. Um, and I don't have to go digging through a bunch of boxes trying to find the one thing I'm looking for. Um, and then of course, like I said, they're all labeled. You know, in these bigger boxes, these are the large boxes, and they fit perfect up here. Um, this one's full of lipless, so I've got the RC Hail Marys, uh, a bunch of Stripe King stuff, so all lipless crankbaits in there. This box is all uh, my RC STX jerkbaits, um, and then a few knockoff uh, Mega Bass, a few Mega Bass, uh, some KVD stuff. In here, this is just a various uh, pile of uh, jerk baits. So in here we've got, um, and we got spy baits in here too, but we've got Yozuri, uh, some knockoffs, Rapla, uh, uh, Lucky Craft pointers, some more KVD stuff, some Cabela stuff, uh, just kind of a mix of uh, a bunch of different jerk baits. Uh, if you haven't been able to figure it out yet, I love me some jerk baits. Uh, this one again, full of jerk baits. So Smithwicks. Um, my lucky pointers, uh, a few other knockoff ones, um, some Berkeley stuff. Um, what are these? These are like a swim bait slash, uh, uh, there's a pointer SPs, um, a little deeper diving one. Uh, you know, the Smithwick Rogues. Uh, this one's wrapped with a crappie crank wrap. Uh, just a hard jerk bait to beat. And then, and this one is all poppers, uh, wake baits and ploppers. So some little uh, lunker hunt stuff, um, some uh, um, uh, whopper ploppers. We've got some big wake baits. Uh, this is my pride and joy. Uh, this is a, uh, a popper that uh, my buddy that owns Crazy Egg Bait Company makes. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Um, lots of little... Uh, uh, little Berkeley poppers. We've got um, an Arashi, uh, some Arashi cover pops. Um, again, just a bunch of different stuff, but all the same theme, right? All top water. You know, we even got the old school brought back to new. The hula popper. Yes, sir. And then everybody loves the little. Uh, um, a little rebel pop R. So you gotta have some of those. I got a couple of those in there. And again, they're all labeled on the front exactly what's in there. They sit up in the box like that so you can see exactly what's in there. And again, it just goes to efficiency, right? Quick. Uh, these are all top water pencil baits. These are all hooks, split rings, uh, Nico weights, drop shot weights, um, underspin, stuff like that. Just more terminal tackle. In here are all of my uh, Lucky Craft or Lucky Strike deep smoothies. Um, and then a few of the uh, shallow smoothies as well. In here, this is kind of a cluster of a bunch of different uh, crankbaits. We've got, you know, the big Jenko fishing um, uh, 25 or 80 foot diving crankbait, whatever that thing is. It's huge. Um, about the biggest crankbait. I think it is the biggest crankbait I own. I think it's a monster. Um, I have a rod specifically that I use for throwing that. Um, I don't throw it often, uh, but when I do, you need a big beefy rod. I've got a big eight foot heavy. Uh, that throws it pretty well. I've got some six cent stuff in here. Um, all these little six cent deals. Got some Berkeley stuff. Uh, some of the square bowls, the diggers, uh, and then the, the fat CBs, the Lucky Craft uh, fat CBs. Um, another really nice crankbait. So just a bunch of different ones in there. And they're mostly deep diving ones. And then this is just Strike King. Uh, so just a bunch of various Strike Kings, uh, 5XDs, 10XDs, um, you know, the real big, big square bills. Um, just uh, just a little, little bit of everything when it comes to uh, Strike King. Um, 
And so that's basically uh, sums up what I have for, for uh, the stuff in the lure lock boxes. Um, I don't keep my, my spinner baits in a lure lock box. I use this Plano. It's a 3700 series um, and a really, uh, really fantastic way to store um, spinner baits. And it's just got a little uh, locking hook there where the arm goes underneath. And then this, the spinner bait just slides up out of there. Um, and super simple, um, compact. I think I've got, I don't know what there is in here, 40, 50 uh, spinner baits. The arms don't get bent up. None of that stuff happens. Got some extra skirts down here at the bottom of the pile um, in case we need to do a switch. Uh, but a really nice way to keep uh, keep your spinner baits uh, in a compact 3700 style case without having one of those big bulky ones. Uh, inside this one, same case. This is just a mix of spinner baits and uh, some buzz baits. Again, same concept, except uh, this top row is made for buzz baits. I also don't use the lure lock boxes for jigs uh, because that tacky material kind of pulls on those strings. So I've just got your simple waterproof uh, Bass Pro Shop box here. Uh, these are all jigs from, uh, not all of them, but 99% of them are all from Torrent, uh, the Torrent Lure Company, uh, a new partner that I took on um, uh, this year. Uh, he makes an absolutely fantastic product um, and they're just, uh, the products, they're just beautiful. Um, you know, swim baits, uh, makes uh, flipping jigs, skipping jigs, uh, uh, bladed jigs, all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, soon we will recreate uh, my signature jig um, as soon as I get them the pictures of it. Uh, and then for other crankbaits, because you can never have enough crankbaits, uh, this is the uh, Bass Mafia, I think it's a 3700. Um, yeah, 3700. And this has almost uh, 60 or 70 crankbaits in it. And I'll just slide in those little slots. Uh, and then in here I keep uh, wiggle warts. So I've got a bunch of different wiggle warts because you got to have those. Some Lucky Craft stuff. Um, we got some, uh, uh, I think that's a Booyah, uh, flat sided crankbaits. We've got um, the H2O Expresses. Uh, my favorite uh, are the Arashi D10s. Uh, I've got those in, I think, every color uh, that was made. Um, we've got the fat uh, um, square fives. I've got the square threes. We've got the flat sevens, um, all Arashi stuff. Uh, and then just a few other odds and ends mixed in there. Uh, we've got some Spro stuff, uh, you know, the rock crawlers and that kind of stuff. but. Um, I will switch these out to um, to that uh, uh, Lurlock 4-in-1 box. Um, so then when it comes to putting it on the boat, the stuff that I'm going to put uh, or that I'm going to use the most are going to stay up in this front box, right? Front box and the right locker. So I use a left locker for the rods. The right locker uh, we'll go through here in a minute, but that's where I keep all the other stuff. Uh, that I need to access quickly, right? I don't want to always have to run to the back of the boat. So uh, a couple of ways that I judge what's going to go up here versus what's going to go back there is one, I always fish the weather. So I'm always looking at the weather a week in advance because if I know what the weather is going to be like that day, I can uh, delete a lot of the stuff that I would normally take with, right? You're not going to fish everything in the wind. So it's just an easy way for me to delete a lot of the stuff and move some stuff back there, move some stuff up here. Um, and then depending on the tactics that I'm going to fish that day, uh, that I'm most likely to fish that day, uh, that's the stuff I'm keeping at the front of the boat because it's right here, easy access. I can get to it quick, uh, and it makes switching up easy. So let's talk about soft plastics for a minute. Now, soft plastics, um, I do a couple of different things. So last year I kept this little tub and it's just full of various soft plastics. So what I use this tub for specifically is the soft plastics that I'm most likely gonna use the day that I'm out fishing, right? So those will go in this box itself uh, because just a little easier access, right? Um, I have everything that I'm most likely gonna use uh, in a few different colors inside of this box. So if I need a swim bait, I can reach in there and grab a couple swim baits. I can grab some flipping stuff. Um, I can grab some some Nico stuff if I'm gonna do that or, or some, uh, um, uh, you know what I'm 
trying to say. I can't even talk tonight. Um, Ned stuff. Um, it's all right there. Quick access. Um, I don't have to dig through a bunch of stuff, right? Keep everything else in like, uh, you know, little six cents bait bags or the KVD speed files, whatever you want to use. I've got a few of the, the six cents bait bags and they're, and they're pretty good. Um, and inside of those, like one will be all Senkos, one will be all flipping baits, uh, one will be all, um, you know, eight inch worms, whatever it is, uh, and labeled. So again, quick access. Uh, if you guys have seen one key thing, it's labeling the boxes so you know what's in there. Uh, and you can just look at a quick glance and know exactly what's in front of you, right? One of the other things I do is I've got a bunch of these Bass Mafia bags, three of them. Um, and inside of them are uh, kind of by category, right? So these are black and blue style flipping baits. Uh, and we've got a little bit of everything. We've got Dexties, we've got Pit Bosses. Um, you know, just a whole bunch of different, uh, style, um, uh, flipping, uh, flipping baits. Um, you'll wonder, do they dry out in there? They don't. Um, I just take, uh, you know, every, about every month, uh, and give them a squirt with some of this just classic bass, uh, uh, scent. Throw a few squirts in there. Close the bag up, give it a shake. Now, not only are they scented, um, but they're remoistened. They're all greasy again, soft. Um, and I think, you know, I think I do that probably once a month. Uh, and then at the very end of the season, I'll do it again uh, and then store them. Uh, they've been in that bag, or I've been keeping stuff in that bag. I mean, the majority of that stuff has been in that bag for two years now. Uh, and it's perfectly fine. Again, same thing with uh, this bag. This is just full of uh, browns and green pumpkin variations of flipping style baits. Uh, so again, easy access. Uh, if I had to do it all over again, I'd probably not take them all out and put them in a bag because you know one of the things I preach about is being able to get the stuff quickly, right? So let's say I reach in there and I pull out a pit boss and that's what I'm using and I'm catching fish on it might take me a minute to dig back in there and find another pit boss. Uh, so maybe I don't recommend doing that, um, but these are great to put bags of plastics in. Uh, since you can see through them, you know exactly what's in there. And then this one uh, is all full of stick baits. So just a ton of different Senkos. Um, and one of the things that I was worried about putting them in here was that they the color would bleed into each other. They don't. I've got browns, oranges, pinks, uh, blues, um, clears, whites, uh, none of the colors bleed into each other. So just a really nice option to keep a bunch of plastics real close um, and uh, in big supply. And then the other thing I keep in there, like I said, was uh, I'll bring a few of these small boxes up front uh, if uh, I know I'm going to be using that stuff a lot so I don't have to go to the back to do it. And then the other thing I keep in there is just a box. Uh, this has got my dip and glow. A um, bunch of different bait scents, um, garlic stuff, uh, just all that kind of stuff uh, stays in this little box so it's not running all over the place. And again, easy access. So that's kind of what I do from an organizational standpoint on the boat. Um, up next, we'll give you kind of a tour of the boat. We've got it all done now. Um, you can kind of see the, the hydro turf uh, that's on here now rather than carpet. Uh, we, we stripped all that carpet out this, uh, this uh, uh, off season replace it all with hydro turf and I'm really, really happy with the results. Um, you know, it's not 100% perfect in every area, uh, but I did it myself uh, and I'm proud of the work that I did. Uh, it's comfortable, it looks great. Um, yeah, we'll do that, we'll go over the grass, we'll go over the new trolling motor uh, that we're gonna run this year. And uh, yeah, so uh, once again, thanks for joining me. If there's anything you guys wanna see, uh, drop it down in the comments. As you can tell, I don't post videos all the time as often as I should. I uh, don't always have uh, a million ideas running around in my head and I could use your help. So uh, like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Click that button or that one or this one. I don't know where it is. Come along for the ride, guys. Tight lines. Uh -huh.